This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Topayo Vets, a veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to vet students and pet owners. This video shows surgical procedures, and thus, viewers' discretion is advised. Today is the 21st of August, 2019. Scooby is a 14-year-old male neutered Caucasus Spaniel who came to the clinic today with a case of high fever and pus oozing out of his neck area. The dog was discovered by his owner's daughter to have had a pit swelling in his neck area two days ago and was thus sent to an emergency vet clinic. The swelling was discovered to be an abscess, which refers to swelling which is filled with pus. The vets at the emergency clinic proceeded with lancing of the abscess, which involved making an incision to drain the pus. The owner subsequently brought Scooby home, but as he soon got weaker, the owner then took him to Tobio Vets. As can be seen in this clip, the Cocker Spaniel was lethargic, anorexic, and was recumbent during the consultation. His temperature was also taken, and he was discovered to have had high fever, with a temperature of 40.5 degrees Celsius. A mistake made by the owner was to bandage the wound after lancing, which prevented the pus from getting drained. Dr. Singh then proposed to give the dog a drip to replenish its lost nutrients, followed by cleaning of the wound. A blood test would also be conducted as the emergency vet clinic had not arranged for one. Antibiotics would also be administered to prevent further infection. Painkillers would also be given to relieve some suffering in the dog. Today is the 22nd of August 2019, day 2. As you can see in this video, the vet at the emergency clinic had made an incision about 1cm long on the left side of the neck where the abscess was. The vet had sent the dog home with a course of antibiotics and saline. Having been home for 3 days, the dog showed little signs of recovery and was recumbent, unable to stand up. That was when the owner brought him to Topayo Vets. Fortunately, Scooby's condition has since improved slightly, and is now able to lift his head slightly, as can be seen here. Scooby was also able to regain some of his appetite, and ate a little overnight yesterday. Examining Scooby's gum after treatment, we can see that Scooby has poor gums. His owner had claimed that Scooby did have a dental appointment last year, although it is difficult to confirm this. Scooby has had no fever today, although he is still very much weak. Scooby was showered and his incision opened to allow drainage of the foul-smelling pus as there is still discharge. The initial abscess was big, about 10cm in length, and reached to his sternum. The emergency vet should have made a bigger incision to effectively drain the pus, and should not have sent the dog home for his owner to do so, which the owner unfortunately did not. Let us now examine Scooby's blood test results. Creatinine levels were observed to be low, which suggests impaired liver or muscle function. High AST levels also suggest liver damage, but it could stem from other causes such as damage to the heart or kidney. Fortunately for Scooby, AST levels soon dropped after, as can be seen by the values from the second blood test taken on the 27th of August 2019, or day 7. While AST values fell back to the acceptable range, ALT values rose after the blood test from day 1. High ALT values suggest liver damage, although this could be due to the taxing of the liver due to medication. Another blood test would thus have to be arranged in about a month's time to help monitor Scooby's condition. Hemoglobin count and red blood cell count is also observed to be lower than expected, which suggests that the dog has anemia. The lack of red blood cells could also be a reason for why the dog was observed to be lethargic and restless over the past couple of days. Scooby was given supplements of iron, vitamin Bs, and amino acids to help replenish the red blood cell count. Platelet count was observed to have been normal, which implies that the clotting ability of blood was not impeded. As can be seen here, the blood test results from day 1 shows a high white blood cell count of 151.0 times 10 to the power of 9 per litre, about 9 to 25 times the usual amount of about 6 to 17 times 10 to the power of 9 per litre, indicating leukocytosis. Additionally, it is also worth noting that the neutrophil count is absurdly high and 98.7%, which is well beyond the usual range of about 60 to 70%, indicating neutrophilia. Since neutrophils are the main type of white blood cells recruited to combat infection, we can thereby conclude that Scooby was indeed suffering from a bacterial infection. This also accounts for the high fever that Scooby experienced. 
Do visit tobiovets.com if you need more information. And once again, thanks for watching.